Hello everyone, today I am going to be talking about the reading tracker in both Google Sheets and Excel. If you have already purchased this template, thank you so much for your order. And if you've stumbled across this video and you're looking for a, an easy way to track all your books, <laughs> feel free to check out the link below to my Etsy listing, purchase and follow along. I am going to have Google Sheets open first. Um, if you're using the Excel version, feel free to follow along there as well. I am going to be hopping between Google Sheets and Excel at a couple different points in the video just to show some customizations there as well. So the first tab that you are going to land on when you open up the tracker is the dashboard. It's going to be pretty blank <laughs> when you open it up, and that's okay. Uh, this will all automatically populate for you as you fill out your book list. Um, but one thing that I do want to highlight before moving on from this tab is my reading goals down here in this section. So I have the years 2020 to 2030. Um, the completed section is going to automatically calculate for you as you populate the book list. But then this section right here, you can set a reading goal for either past years if you do want to track what you've accomplished in the past or um, in the future, it's there for you as well. So feel free to edit that column for the goals for each year. And then your percentage is automatically going to calculate for you as well. So the first place you're going to want to start after that is the book list tab. So this is going to be where you can track all of the details of all of your books. Um, you'll see it's pretty in depth and uh, that's great. And so this is going to populate the dashboard and allow you to see everything about all your books in one place. So let's go ahead and start populating some of this just for the sake of example. So the first one you're going to do your book title, then you are going to do your author uh, name here as well. If your book is part of a series, um, you can populate the series name here as well. So maybe these two are the same series. The next column is going to be book type. So this is going to be um, audio, ebook, hardcover, or paperback. Select the type that you are currently reading um, yourself. So you can go through and populate some of these as well. Um, hours, you can go ahead and put in the hours of the book right here. And then the amount of pages as well. You can populate that too. Uh, the genre type, the first one's going to be fiction or nonfiction, so you can go ahead and select those. And then the next column is going to be the genre of the book. So you'll see there's a lot of different genres uh, in here as well. Feel free to either select uh, from these genres, or if you would like to edit any of the genres, say uh, you do not see um, the genre of your book in here, what you're going to do in Google Sheets is you're going to click on the drop down menu and scroll all the way to the bottom until you see that pencil icon, the edit button. Go ahead and click on that. And then this is going to populate on the right hand side of your screen. You can either edit any of the genres in here, the text of the genres, or you can scroll all the way to the bottom and add another genre um, at the bottom as well. When you've finished making all your changes, you're going to go ahead and click done. This is going to pop up in Google Sheets only, and you're going to click apply to all. And all that's doing is it's going to not only update uh, this one for you, but it's also going to have genre 15 available um, for any other uh, book as well, which is nice. Uh, and then I am going to hop over to Excel real quick for that column because editing that is a little bit different. Um, so let me hop right over here. So column I is going to be your genre column. And what you're going to do in order to edit that, so you'll see that the drop down menu has all the different genres as well. So to edit or add to, you are going to select I4 and drag your mouse basically all the way to the bottom of your Excel spreadsheet, all the way down here to I999. Uh, you are going to click on data in the menu up here and then data validation. And you're gonna see this screen pop open in Excel. Um, this is basically going to have all of the genres listed out here, as well as the ability to come to the end of the list. Um, after the last one, you would add a comma and then you would type in your new genre. And you can also, if you would like to edit any of these as well, you would just select which genre you would like to edit. Just make sure that you select in between the commas. Um, go ahead and type in your genre name, and then you would click OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to apply the change to the drop down menu across the entire column I. So hopping back to Google Sheets, the next column is going to be ownership. That's going to say if you've owned, borrowed, or it's on your wish list. Uh, the status is going to be if you have basically started the book, if it's next in line, not started, or if you're currently reading it. So go ahead and populate, populate these as you see fit. Uh, the start date is going to be the start uh, date that you started the book. <laughs> so go ahead and put that one in here. Um, if you have a finished date, you would go ahead and populate that. But if not, just leave it blank. Um, so let me populate this as well. 
not started and next in line, you would basically leave started and finished uh, just blank there. And then if you have um, read a book in the past, you can go ahead and put in your start and finish date there. And then days is going to automatically calculate for you. Um, if you do own the book, you can put in how much you paid for the book um, in any of those columns. Or if it's on your wish list, you can put in um, how much it is as well. And then your progress, you are going to add in the percentage of progress that you've completed the book. So in this case, maybe you're like 20% and maybe this one, you are 80%. Um, you can go ahead and put that in there. Um, and then the completed, you can put in 100% as well. And then you can go ahead and give each book a rating as well. So you can use the five-star rating. This is your personal rating, just so you can go back and kind of see, did I like that person? Did I like that author? Did I like that series? Um, and then you can also have a space to add notes as well. So you can extend this column as far as you would like, and you can add as many notes about the book as you would like as well, basically as a, a reading log or a reading journal. So as you populate all of this information on here, before I, I go over to any of the other tabs, I just want to point out a couple of things as well. So you can add up to a thousand books. So if you have a thousand books on here, it might be a little bit tricky to find what you are looking for. If you're trying to remember like, oh gosh, when did I read that book? Or have I read anything else by this author? Have I finished that series? You will see uh, right here, there's like these little sorting icons in each one of these columns. This is a really good way to be able to sort um, by either author. So if you want to see everything that you read by author number four, you can click OK, and it's just going to filter author number four. And let me undo that. Same with the series. So if you just want to see um, everything for series one, then you can see, OK, great. I am reading one and then the other one's next in line. And let me undo that. Um, you can filter by audio type, or I'm sorry, by book type to see audiobook, hardcover. You can filter by hours, pages, um, genre type or genre, um, ownership, status. All of these columns have the filter, which is really, really cool. So you can either filter on this screen, which I find to be really helpful. And the same, the same functionality is available in Excel. It looks just a little bit different. So it's a little arrow um, as opposed to like that little filter icon. But again, you would just click that and then you would click the filter that's available in here and it'll automatically filter for you, which is really nice. And then in Google Sheets, if you hop back to the dashboard, now that you have a, a couple pieces of data in here, you can start to see how all of this automatically populates for you. Um, so it'll show you your total number of books completed ever. <laughs> it'll also show you the book status, um, hours listened, pages read, audio versus, you know, ebook, hardcover, paperback. Um, this is what's really cool. The digital bookshelf, it'll show you uh, really easily, again, what you're currently reading, next in line, not started. Um, genre overview. So this you can start to see, okay, you are liking business books <laughs> more than other genres. Um, and then if you scroll down here as well. So in this column right here, in this uh, chart right here, you can start to see the books that you completed by month and by year. Um, so you can see, okay, I completed one book in July of 2024. And then if you have data from past or future years, you can see basically how you stack up for any patterns throughout the year. And then same thing as you complete books, um, you will start to see all of that populate here as well. And then the percentage as well uh, that's completed towards your goal. The next tab that I want to show you is your calendar view. Um, so this is basically a way to see a visual Gantt chart of your uh, reading progress, which is really cool. So you'll see that this is automatically populated for you. There is no need to do any data re-entry. It's going to automatically pull from your book list. And again, you can uh, scroll infinitely for all of your books here as well. Um, what's really cool is this Gantt chart is going to automatically populate for you. So you can first enter in the first day of the calendar um, that you want your Gantt chart to start on. So I'm going to change this to 6 one and you're going to see that the dates all of a sudden moved. Um, and I'm actually going to change that to 5 one just so that this will populate right here for you. And then any of the dates that you have start and end dates on, it's going to automatically show on your Gantt chart, um, which, which is really cool. So that's going to automatically populate for you. Um, any changes that you have to that, definitely make sure to make them on the book list. So say you were like, oh gosh, it actually took me <laughs> to 5.4 instead of 5.3. You would go ahead and make that change here. And then in the calendar view, you're going to see that it automatically pulled that over for you. And then it automatically updated your Gantt chart as well. So this is a really nice visual. Um, again, you can change the first day of the calendar or you can use this week of the year drop-down menu. Um, so say, I'm just going to go back to 1.124. 
So then say you would want to see, you know, 19 weeks into the year, when you change that, then it's going to take you to May as well. Um, so there's just a couple different ways uh, to make those changes. Um, but that's, this is just a really cool view to see all your progress in one place. And then the last tab you are going to see is your habit tracker. This is 365 days. So it infinitely scrolls all the way to the right for you. And it's a really cool way to just track on what days of the year you read and listened. And some days you might do both. I know myself personally, I like to read physical books and listen. So you might have both dates checked, but as you check off the boxes, you're gonna scroll all the way to the right to basically get a uh, report. So it'll say 12 out of 365 days, you read, and then four out of 365, you listened, and then it'll give you a percentage here as well. Uh, so that is the reading tracker. Again, uh, thank you so much for your order. I hope this is super helpful for you, and I will see you in the next video.